Hello and welcome back to LDT 3135, Practical Project Management. I'm Dr. Tim Boyleau, and in this unit, our focus is on understanding and meeting client expectations. Project management, particularly within the discipline of learning, design, and technology, is about understanding and meeting client expectations. This requires understanding the organizational culture of the client and having an effective communication strategy in place to effectively manage client expectations. With that brief introduction, let's get started. Here is our agenda for this module. We have a fair amount of material to cover, including what do we mean when we talk about client expectations? What are the components and steps for defining organizational culture for project management? We'll look at the elements and competencies for creating a team culture, setting and managing client expectations, alignment of organizational values with client expectations, dealing with problems to meet expectations, project communications management processes in the PMBOK, and next steps for the remainder of this module. Working with a new client is like any new relationship. You start by getting to know one another in order to establish trust in the relationship. Understanding and meeting client expectations begins with an understanding of the cultural context of the organization in which the product is being developed. It also requires a communication strategy to promote client engagement and to address problems as they arise. Depending on the complexity level of the project, communication strategies to meet client expectations can range from having a project kickoff meeting for a general discussion with the project leadership team to developing a formal plan that is tracked throughout the project life cycle. Because project stakeholders exert considerable influence over the success of the project in terms of expertise, political influence, and access to resources, an essential purpose of the communications plan is to build ownership and engagement with client stakeholders. Remember that engaged stakeholders are more likely to contribute and become invested in the team's success during each life cycle phase. Organizational culture refers to the beliefs, attitudes, and values that the organization's members share with one another and the associated behaviors and activities that are used to create value. It also affects the way that the organization views the project team members in terms of expectations for communicating problems, successes, and deliverables for the project. This requires the project manager to possess the following business competencies. The ability to identify sponsors and stakeholders along with decision-making levels within the organization. Determine communication methods and frequency based on the culture, organizational business practices, and needs of the project. Determine a preferred medium for communication and identify any vocabulary, jargon, and acronyms that are unique to the organizational culture. There may also be different cultural norms and values among the members of the team as project teams become more distributed and diverse in global society. As a result, Project leadership needs to reflect sensitivity and awareness of multicultural preferences and work habits. Project team competencies include emotional intelligence, which is the capacity to be aware of, control, and express one's own emotions, and to handle interpersonal relationships judiciously and empath empathetically. It's clearly defined expectations for working relationships and outcomes. Consistency in selected communication styles and language, respect for individual values and beliefs, and agreement on scheduled project meeting times, events, and milestones. Understanding and meeting client expectations requires establishing trust and frequently begins with educating the client on the organizational benefits of Agile. Oftentimes, the client may lack formal project management experience in terms of project phases and requirements within the different phases, particularly using Agile frameworks. This can cause frustration and lack of alignment on expectations. In other cases, particularly in larger organizations, there may be a project management office, or PMO, that defines 
project management standards and processes for the entire organization. Using agile product development frameworks helps to alleviate these types of issues through shorter cycle times and incremental product delivery. This is also why it is good practice to include the client in sprint planning sessions to ensure alignment of goals and requirements for each product iteration. And remember that client stakeholder participation in project teams is important for decision making and to create buy-in. In addition, client insights can provide specific knowledge of the organizational goals and culture which may not be present in the project team. We've talked about the link between culture and expectations. Expectations for project performance are also based on values in terms of the importance, worth, or perceived benefit of the project to the organization and stakeholders. As part of the project charter, you determine scope of work, the project purpose statement, and the list of high-level project deliverables. In addition, you identified the, pro the, the, the project values to be embraced by the team and the client stakeholders. These represent the set of value-based principles and qualities governing how the work will take place, which include team values, working agreements, ground rules, and group norms for the project team. To identify client expectations, you should review the written requirements documents, but also have a dialogue with the client to uncover unwritten expectations by asking questions and listening. Recall that functional as well as non-functional requirements are captured in the product and sprint backlogs and are critically reviewed during the sprint review and are present in the product increment at the end of each sprint as evidence of value. Be mindful of culture expressed in the stated corporate values, written goal and requirement statements, and in client actions and behaviors related to those stated values. Conflicts may be avoided by identifying potential conflicting values before they become problems. And project missteps and clarifications identified during sprint retrospectives represent opportunities for shared learnings without blame, leading to improvements in the next sprint. Projects always experience unexpected problems that can produce stress and are typically easier to deal with during the early stages of the product development life cycle. Regardless of when they occur, dealing with problems competently and systematically is vital to maintaining a good relationship with clients. Within the daily scrum, problems are addressed and decisions are made in alignment with the sprint goal and backlog. In large, complex projects, there may be hundreds of project decisions made each day. To facilitate decision-making in complex projects in order to deal with unexpected problems affecting the project's scope, quality, or deliverables, a responsibility matrix is often part of the communication strategy. The responsibility matrix is included in the project management plan. This is essentially a table of people and categories of problems specifying who has the authority to make decisions to bring the project back on track, depending on the type of problem or issue. An example of a responsibility matrix is provided below. And during the sprint review and retrospective, decisions related to problem resolution should be revisited to facilitate learning. Having a mechanism for revisiting project decisions is important for meeting client expectations and for ensuring quality of the product. In the next two slides, I want to spend a few minutes to talk about project communications management and its role in meeting client expectations. According to the PMBOK, project communications management includes the processes necessary to ensure that the information needs of the project and its stakeholders are met through the development of artifacts and implementation of activities that are designed to achieve effective information exchange. So with that, the three project communications processes are plan communications management, the, which is the process of developing an appropriate approach and plan for project communications activities based on the information needs of each stakeholder group, organizational values, and the needs of the project. The second is managed communications. This is a process for ensuring timely and appropriate collection 
creation, distribution, storage, retrieval, management, monitoring, and the ultimate disposition of product, project information. And then finally is monitoring communications. This process ensures the information needs of the project and its stakeholders are met. It should be noted that project communications management is implicit in every project life cycle and is an, an explicit requirement of the planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling project management process groups within the PMI standard. There are several evolving and emerging trends and practices for project communications management, some of which we've already touched on. These include, but are not limited to, inclusion of stakeholders in project reviews and meetings. As we've discussed, successful project teams are inclusive of the stakeholder groups that are directly impacted by the project. An effective communication strategy, therefore, requires regular and timely reviews of the stakeholder community with updates to account for changes in stakeholder membership and attitudes and to ensure expectations are being met. Another trend is increased use of social media. Use of social computing and the social media devices via personal mobile devices has changed the way that organizations and their members communicate and do business. In addition, use of social media tools not only supports information exchange, but also builds stronger relationships accompanied by deeper levels of trust and community. Multifaceted approaches to communications. The communication strategy must be tailorable based on the types of technologies embraced by stakeholders, including the increased use of social media and networking, along with respect for cultural, practical, and personal preferences for language, media, content, and delivery. And the final trend that I want to mention is considerations for agile and adaptive environments. This is where the, the space that we're working in for this project. Organizations continue to trend in the direction of agile and adaptive product development and project management environments in order to deal with increased ambiguity and rapid change in global business practices. This creates a need to communicate evolving and emerging details faster and with greater frequency. Agile seeks to streamline team member access to information, provide frequent team checkpoints, and co-locate team members to the extent possible via physical or virtual modalities. In addition, posting project artifacts transparently and holding regular stakeholder reviews helps to promote communication with management and increase engagement among stakeholders. We conclude this presentation with next steps. Of course, be sure to work through all parts of the course materials for Module 5, including all content, activities, and assignments. You'll see that there are two assignments for this module when you get to Part 3 of the, uh, the activities. The first is that you'll be wor uh, working in your next sprint, which is the third sprint, and um, you also should will be working on developing your project management plan, which is the second formal deliverable due at the beginning of Module 6. Looking ahead, be sure to review all associated readings in the course schedule as you prepare for Module 6. Well, that brings us to the end of this presentation. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. And until next time, this is Dr. Tim Boyleau wishing each of you a pleasant learning experience, and I'll see you online.